Good morning, everybody. It's me, Summer Filigree 3, and for today's video, I am working on my next collaboration piece with Nazreen. So starting off, I've already sketched my piece on some Strathmore cold press watercolor paper, and now I'm just going in and inking that. To sketch this piece, I used my Prismacolor Color Race color pencil in Scarlet Red. If you'd like to know all the supplies I use, please check the description box down below. There's always a list there just for you. So for this piece, I was going back to do the colored inking. So instead of doing like a solid black outline, I'm using different colored multi-liners to go around each section where it would look best. I've tried this technique a few times before, and from the last piece, I really learned a lot. I also made better use of the sepia tone rather than using the grey so much. So for our collaboration we chose to do uh, fashion history. So we each gave each other a time period and Nazarene gave me Baroque! So I looked up the pictures of Marie Antoinette that she suggested. I never saw the film, but she included a picture of their shoes that apparently happens in the movie. But I used that picture as inspiration for my color palette. I looked up a bunch of reference images of Marie Antoinette, and I saw the boat hair. And to be honest, I don't think I could have done this piece without doing the boat hair. Like I. As soon as I saw that picture, I knew I had to do that. I came up with quite a few concepts for it with the ship in the hair, and I ended up settling on this. And the concept behind it is pretty much how extra can she get? Like, okay, a boat in her hair is pretty great, but what else can I add? So rather than it being like a scale boat, I wanted to do a really large boat that could probably hold a person. You know, what's more extra than a boat? Well, candles, fire hazards. Fire hazards were popular for a long, long time as a fashion statement. <laughs> so I decided to do lit candles on said boat. And then, of course, there is the peacock sitting on the back part of the boat there. In all the reference images I found of the boat hair that was Marie Antoinette's, I found that the back of the ship, sorry for not using proper ship language, but it was always facing her face. So the front of the boat, like if the boat was going forward, she would have to walk backwards. But I think it works out because the shape is just a lot more pleasing to look at this way. I made sure to have a couple of repetitive elements in this piece. So rather than choosing different ribbon colors to go on all the different ribbony aspects of this piece, I chose to keep them all one color, which also is helpful if you do this color multi-liner trick. It helps you kind of keep track of what's what color because I didn't come up with a thumbnail colored like I should have when I made this, but since I knew I was going to do Nazarene's color palette from that movie, I kind of knew what colors I wanted to use from that and which ones I was going to incorporate in other ways. So even though I used the same multi-liners, I wanted to make sure that some parts were different. So rather than use the wine Copic multi-liner like I would have done in the past, I decided to try using my Sakura Pigma Micron in purple to do the main body of her dress, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I tested it off to the side and I was afraid it was going to be too dark, but why not, right? Let's go for it. I could have always made the dress purplier if I had to. The idea behind this piece is that she has entered, you know, the party of her own design and she's walking in and maybe someone's like, wow, that's that's a nice peacock or something. And she's like, oh, this, this is nothing. Oh, ha ha ha. You know, you know, just running out to get the mail or get some groceries, just heading on out. And here I use my kneaded eraser to clean away the sketch. And of course, you know, you always forget a couple lines, so I went back in and added those. Now, using my watercolors, I am adding her skin. 
And this is actually the Naples Yellow watercolor from Van Gogh. And I did do a swatching of this in my colored fine tech review video. And the unboxing and swatching one, I'll link that up above so you can go check it out if you missed it. But I didn't actually get a chance to try it out when I swatched it on the video. Like, I didn't actually do a painting with it between then and now. So I decided to use it here, and I'm so glad I did. I feel like the skin tone already has the brightness I needed, and I can't wait to use it again in the future to build my skin tones off of. The other part of the collaboration was that we were to incorporate the other person's birthstone into the image. So Nazarene was born in March, and her birthstone is aquamarine. And another March birthstone is Bloodstone, and she said they were kind of interchangeable, just like I was born in June, it's either a Pearl or Diamond or Alexandrite, like there's a few in there that are available as June birthstones. <laughs> so I decided to incorporate both. So all the windows on the ship are supposedly aquamarine, and then the windows on the back of the ship, like the rectangular ones, are Bloodstone. I was really happy with the wash I mis mixed for her dress in this piece too. I don't know, I feel like it just it was pretty smooth. If you didn't see, in my Christmas haul I actually got a new brush and I used it quite a bit for this piece. I'll link that up above too. But I really, I liked it a lot. It's the same style brush that I have, but a bigger size. And I didn't know how well it was going to do small areas, except the tip is still really, really pointy, so I was able to do any small area I wanted to, which was so nice. For the hair here, I've had bad experiences trying to color white hair. If I try to shade with purple, it ends up looking actually like lilac colored, so I was really careful this time to mix a light purpley gray and just use it sparingly, enough where it has that grayish look of a powdered wig, but not so much that it's like she has actual gray hair. When I was sketching this piece, I was thinking about having her have a darker skin tone, so it would contrast with the powdered wig, but in the end I decided to go more with the reference photos I was finding of Marie Antoinette. I don't know that it's supposed to specifically be her, but I think I'd like to do a image styled like this where I have a darker skin tone and then like a bright white curly wig like this. With the uh, ribbons here around her hair, I decided to tie all bows in the piece with the loops big and like the tails short except for the one on the peacock of course with all the tails hanging. But I feel like they don't read as well as a regular bow. I was hoping it might have like an interesting vibe to it, but I'm not sure. Let me know what you think. For the bird here, one of my main concerns was making him too saturated in comparison to the rest of the piece, so I built up kind of slowly on him. As I'm recording this voiceover, I have 84 subscribers, and as one of you so kindly pointed out to me, I know who you are, I'm gonna be getting up into 100 subscribers soon, hopefully. So I am planning a couple fun things, including but not limited to a different giveaway. Thinking maybe a giveaway, and then maybe some sort of a drawing your characters event. I don't know, let me know if you have any ideas or things that you'd like to see coming up. Doesn't have to be specifically for the 100 subscribers, but just like videos you'd like to see. Now that I just showed is masking fluid and I'm painting that on to where I want to leave the white for the candles. So here for a dress, I'm just using the more saturated pinks to add shadows. I was afraid to go too saturated at first because I still wanted to match the pastel color palette that Nazarene picked out for me, but I decided that there's never really any case where more pink isn't better, so I'm using the kind of orchid looking one, I don't know that that's what it's called, but that's kind of what I call it in my head whenever I use it, to just add more shading and deepen up the color of the dress. And for the ribbons, I'm using a more purpley color to go in 
add the dark parts, and then blend that out with just clean water. Because the ribbons are like a kind of a silk look, you know, like that shiny ribbony texture, I want to make sure to leave some pretty distinct highlights. Then here for the little windows, I want those to be aquamarine because that was part of our collab where we each had to use each other's birthstone. And painting over that masking fluid will leave a sharp white highlight just like if it was an actual stone. Originally I thought about making them beveled, like, you know, a cut gem, but I think flat kind of reflects the idea that they're windows a bit more. Here for the trim, I decided to make it dark. I was thinking about doing all the boats trim in uh, reflective gold, but I feel like that might compete too much with the glitter effects I wanted to add later on. Here for the sails, I wanted to make sure to use a color that was similar to the one I used for her hair, but a little bit purplier, kind of have that pink undertone so it's not just flat gray. The white areas of this piece take up a lot of space, so I wanted to make sure to actually make them interesting. Now just deepening up some of the shadows in that wig. and then doing the same with the saturation on the wood of the boat. Because there were so many different elements to this piece, I wanted to make sure to make each of the textures interesting and unique. To improve this, I feel like I could have maybe made the wood of the boat a little bit more orange to reflect that mustardy pastel yellow that's part of the color palette, but I'm glad that I left it as boat colored, like to match the really saturated peacock's tail that's right there. I feel like the more desaturated brown of the wood kind of reflects that nicely. And then I'm using a wet on wet technique to add the different colors in the flames of the candles. Then just doing a little blushing and adding some makeup to her. And then for these back windows on the boat, those are Bloodstone, which are the other birthstone for Nazarene's birth month. So I went in and painted the red areas first, and now I'm going around those with a dark green and a really tiny brush. Well, painting with a size brush is really kind of difficult in a different way, like just with how much water it holds. I actually use this brush on my portfolio piece, so if you'd like to check that out, I will have a card pop up and you can see more of tiny brush footage. Again, I'm using my Prismacolor Call Erased Colored Pencils to go in and add some more saturation to specific areas of the piece. And while they are not watercolor pencils, if you do use them and then apply a little bit of clean water over them, they do tend to have a little bit of a melting effect. So I wouldn't go as far as to do a whole piece with them like this, but to add just like a little blush or to darken up a shadow or what have you, I feel like it's a really useful thing to do. There's a really fine balance between going too dark like for contrast, and then like actually staying within your color palette. <laughs> for the peacock here, I'm switching over to Copics. While it is possible to build up watercolors this dark, if I have access to the material, why not use it? I feel like the Copic makes doing that last step of shading and saturation a lot easier and faster, not to mention there's no drying time. Now here for the peacock tail, I wanted to do something with it because I felt like with all the really big shapes of the piece, we have the ship, the hair, the dress, I wanted to do something interesting. 
So using my Copex, I'm going in and adding these oval kind of feather shapes and just making sure those fill in the shape and adding a little bit of gradient and shading. Originally, this was as far as I was going to go and just leave it at this kind of graphic element, but I did get the idea to detail these further with glitter pens, which you'll see. Just doing some last shading with a couple gray Copics. And that was me removing the masking fluid, so now all of the white that was saved is revealed. And now using V22, I'm going in and adding some much needed little boosts of shading. I feel like this also helps to unify the colors that I used to shade. Because I do tend to do a bit of shading with the color of the object, and adding the purple really gives it an extra dimension. Then just a quick signature. And it's glitter time! So for the glitter, I'm using my Achuspica glitter pens to do the main blue dot of each peacock feather. And then I'm using the Jelly Roll Stardust in teal, I believe. They don't have color names, but I'm just going around the blue dot and doing a teardrop shape. And I want to get more of these pens. I haven't seen a glitter pen really this reflective before, and it makes me really excited. Originally this audio was different, but I realized I wasn't recording, so this is all new. And since I recorded the first part of this video, I did actually go to the store and get myself a pink Stardust pen. So I can't wait to use that in the video. This with a brush here, this is a Wink of Stella glitter brush pen. It comes in a few colors, but that was the clear. And now just a few highlights with my Uniball Signo Broad UM153 white gel pen. And here is the finished piece! Nazarene, I had so much fun collaborating with you and I can't wait to do it again in the future. I hope that you all enjoyed seeing our collaborations together. If you want to see Nazarene's piece, I'll have a card pop up right now and it'll be linked in the description box down below. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. And I do have some clips of the glitter for you. I wanted to make sure to show you the really sparkly nature of this piece. It really doesn't capture on camera, but until then, I will see you in the next one, alright?